on the news tonight, Governor Soludo urges politicians to emulate patriotic spirits of Nnamdi Azikiwe. Anambra State Local Government Service Commission goes after ghost workers in local government system. On national matters, federal government tasks Polytechnic students on innovation to promote technology. And on the foreign scene, North Korea fires another ballistic missile towards South Korea. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. Good evening and thanks for joining us on the news tonight. My name is Chinyere Ikeoreke. Governor Chukuma Saludo has called on Nigerian politicians to emulate the patriotic spirit of the late Dr. Namdi Azikiwe in nation building. Governor Saludo made the call during the 11th Zeke Lecture Series at the Namdi Azikiwe University, Oka. Government House Correspondent Emmanuel Okunko reports. The event with the theme, Nigeria in the throes of insecurity towards 2023, any panacea attracted dignitaries from within and outside the state, including Governor Ifani Okoa of Delta State, who chaired the occasion, a constitutional lawyer and human rights activist, Dr. Mike Ozekome, traditional ruler of Onecha, Igwen Nemeka Achebe, that of Oka, Obigib Simwosu, among others. Professor Chuo Masoludo, who was represented by his deputy, Dr. Onye Katui Bezim, described the late Dr. Aziki were as a great Igbo son and true Nigeria, who throughout his life toiled for the unity peace and all-round well-being of the country and believed so much in one Nigeria, adding that Nigerians should emulate his love for the nation. Governor Soludo noted that among Anambra state government's efforts towards continuous remembrance of the numerous contributions of the late Dr. Aziki were in nation building is the declaration of the yearly November 16th public holiday, among other things. Earlier in an address, the chairman on the occasion, Governor Kowa, while commending the organizers of the Zeke Lecture Series, called on the federal government to tackle issues of insecurity in the country, including incessant farmers and headers crisis for progress, peace, and food security in Nigeria. I commend the organizers of the same event for their steadfastness and drive to see a better Nigeria where every Nigerian is free to pursue his or her dreams of success and happiness. The Zip Lecture Series has become renowned as a platform for rediscourse of the Nigerian project. In addition to preferring pragmatic solutions to the many obstacles on our path to peaceful coexistence, unity, and sustainable development. In a remark, the Zeke Lecture Series benefactor, Senator Ben Undiobi, while regretting that the Nigerian government has not given the education sector the adequate attention it deserves, pointed out that no serious nation desirous of growth will halt academic proceeding for eight months, as witnessed in Nigeria recently. An act, he said, is an invitation to both political and economic anarchy, calling on the Buhari-led administration to pay the university lecturers their full salary without further delay, as the nation cannot afford another strike at this time. The man who refused to allow anybody to bring down his office, the man who was number two man from 1985 to 1986. From Namde Azikiwe University, Oka, I am Emmanuel Okoko, reporting for ABS News. Chairman 
of Anambra State Local Government Service Commission, Barista Vin Eziaka, has reiterated the Commission's determination to fish out non-existing workers in the Anambra State Local Government System. He disclosed this during an interactive session with all heads of departments from the 21 local government areas of the state. We have details. Aka, who said that the board has the mandate of reviving the local government system, urged the heads of departments to live up to expectations. He blamed the heads of departments and the entire council management for the decay in the local government system, stating that the purpose of the interactive meeting was to discuss extensively the challenges of the various departments, as well as ascertain the actual staff strength and genuine data of workers for necessary administrative functions. Barrister Zaka, who revealed that the commission will soon commence official tour of the 21 local government areas, also noted that the commission has come up with a policy that any staff above grade level 10 will no longer be appointed as cashier in the local government system to avoid conflicts and power tussle. In their separate species, representatives of the seven departments, Dr. Ezinne Ofojebe for education and social welfare, Dr. Ore Ifeyung for planning, engineer Cosmos one for, for works, among others, listed lack of local government autonomy, lack of authentic staff data, among others, are some of the problems facing the local government system. They promise to reciprocate the kind gesture of the government by being more dedicated to their duties, adding that prompt attention to the above listed problems will help reduce conflicts, restore confidence, ensure productivity, job satisfaction, and improve economy. The member one in the commission, Honorable Azubike Okoye noted that part of the purpose of the meeting was to discuss problems of the various departments and proffer solutions as well as maintain good cordial relationship with the board management and the entire staff. The, the National Population Commission, in collaboration with the National Orientation Agency in Anambra State, has organized a capacity building workshop on the 2023 population and housing census in Oka. The workshop spearheaded by the commissioner representing Anambra State in the National Population Commission, Mr. Chi Dezioke, attracted stakeholders who gathered to brainstorm on how to synergize in order to enhance sensitization and mobilization of Indian Anambra and residents for a successful conduct of the 2023 population and housing census. Onyinye Agubaze reports. Commissioner, in his welcome address, said that the partnership for the 2023 census will focus on building the capacity of National Orientation Agency functionaries to have deeper understanding of census methodology to effectively sensitize and mobilize the people for the census and the field sensitization activities such as community sensitization, street campaigns and advocacy visits by the joint team officials to the 21 local government areas of the state. Why stating that with the approval of President Muhammad Buhari, there is top gear preparations for successful implementation of the census exercise, Mr. Ezoke said that the overall goal is to inform the Anambra of the vision of the commission to also draw their support towards ensuring state and local government areas cooperation for the implementation of the 2023 census, which will be used to deliver credible and reliable data, which can be used for sustainable development planning. The purpose of this collaboration between NPC and Dola is to enhance the sensitization and mobilization of Indian Ambra and residents in Anambra for the successful conduct of the 2023 population and housing census. In his address, the Director of National Population Commission in Anambra State, Dr. Johakim Olasi, stated that the collaboration with the National Orientation Agency is to strategize on how to sensitize the populace in all the 21 local government areas of the state about the upcoming 2023 population and housing census. Dr. Ulasi stated that the workshop's goal is to educate the National Orientation Agency's management and staff on census methodology and processes. 
to strengthen institutional collaboration between the National Orientation Agency and the National Population Commission in carrying out their respective mandates and to develop a comprehensive work plan for the successful implementation of the 2023 Census Advocacy and Publicity. To level the nationwide and grassroots reach and social of NOAA in the capacity campaign of 2023 census. The Anambra State Director of the National Orientation Agency, Barrister Charles Wargi, stated that the agency will ensure that public information reaches every member of the society, particularly those in the hinterland, by sensitizing the public on what census is all about. I wish to let you know that we are living in our own like we are born during the whole year and we are born in our efforts to make people understand what the freedom of information act is that we are born in our opinion of any in our number state and so many other national programs. In Oka, I am Onyinye Agubeze reporting for ABS News. Indian Nambra living in Lagos State gathered at Police College Ikeja, Lagos to celebrate Anambra Cultural Day 2022. Anambra Cultural Day is a unique and annual event that draws all the industrial sons and daughters of the state together to wine and dine with one another as members of Anambra State Development Union exhibits their rich cultural heritage in colorful and glamorous way, as well as contribute their quota for the development of their home states. Correspondent Justice Onyemobi of our Lagos Bureau, who would cover the event, reports that the event recorded an impressive turnout of Indian Nambra within and outside Lagos. His report. In a speech, the President General, Anambra State Development Union Chief Amechi Ebeledike, stressed that the cultural day was organized as a way of promoting the rich culture and the traditions of Ndubo of Anambra extraction. They must ensure that they live peacefully and they're happily with uh, the residents of the state and of course the indigents also, so that the government of the state will not have any reason to begin to profile us. In a keynote address, the Anambra State Governor, Professor Chukwu Masonudo, represented by Senior Special Assistant to the Governor on Anambra Liaison Office, Barrister Liu Chieboka, thanked all those that are in one way or the other supporting the fight against insecurity and promised to intensify efforts towards actualizing the Anambra of their dreams by making it livable and prosperous. Interviews. The National President of Asatu, Chief Titus Abudo, Barrister Ben Chufukelo, Mr. Victor Atuanya, noted that the annual cultural day celebration is another way of proving to the world that Anambra people are talented, hardworking, skillful, and above all, resilient, calling on parents to always avail their children the opportunity to attend events like this in order to learn the culture and traditions of their origin. Also speaking, Igwe Gerald Mbamalo of Ojoto Community in Demli South Council area called for sustainability of the culture and traditions of Igbo communities and urged Indian Umbra in Lagos who have not identified themselves with the union to do so. This is what we are expecting to be happening because we like our culture and uh, we never allow our culture to die. By the time they are doing it in this way, all our children that uh, very little and those that have not traveled to the village, they will know that Igbo people will have our culture and our culture will never die. Much passed by all the participating communities, cultural dances by different groups and masquerading featured at the event. When ABS Evening News returns, federal government tasks polytechnic students on innovation to promote technology. 
North Korea fires another ballistic missile towards South Korea. Here is a special message again. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. Stay with us. A peak protein breakfast gets me to a great day. How do I know? Because my daddy goes to his work feeling good and always with a smile. Mommy is always filled with confidence. My sister is always in tune. And for me, learning new things becomes absolute fun. That's because all day and every day, the peak goes on. Start your day with a peak protein breakfast peak. Reach for your peak. A peak protein breakfast gets me to a great day. How do I know? Because my daddy goes to his work feeling good and always with a smile. Mommy is always filled with confidence. My sister is always in tune. And for me, learning new things becomes absolute fun. That's because all day and every day, the peak goes on. Start your day with a peak protein breakfast peak. Welcome back. And if you're just joining us, you're watching ABS Evening News. The federal government has challenged participants at the first edition of Polytechnics and Innovation Enterprise Institution competition among students in the Polytechnics and Innovation Enterprise Institution in Nigeria to design innovative technology-based projects for either commercial and entrepreneurial purposes or as small business innovation research purposes. Equi Ajide has status. Speaking at this year's edition of the competition, exhibition and award ceremonies, the Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Education, Dr. David Adejo said, science and technology remain essential as a tool for rapid development of any successful economy. The Permanent Secretary, represented by the Director of Special Duties, Mr. Zubairu Abdullahi, noted that countries like Singapore, Japan, Korea, People's Republic of China, and many others developed faster because they have a strong base in science and technology. According to him, the Federal Minister of Education introduced the competition at the Polytechnics and Innovation Enterprise institutions to promote policies, programs, and initiatives that will enable undergraduates showcase their talents, skills, and creativity in science and technology for national development. Dr. Adejo said the competition will encourage science and technology students to believe in hard work. These skills to meet national manpower need, national manpower need and for, and for global competitiveness. To encourage science and technology students to believe in hard work, talents and creativity as an added impetus for job and wealth creation. To challenge, challenge students to design innovative technology-based projects for commercial or entrepreneurship purposes or as small business innovation research purposes. In his speech, the lead consultant for the project, Dr. Johnson Onoja said the program started with 70 contenders after which 18 emerged, three each from the geopolitical zones to contest in the grand finale. He expressed satisfaction that many of the projects embarked upon by the students are strategically targeting solving the problems of the citizenry. Some of the participants, including Odideka Chimwoke from Federal Polytechnic Uku, Aliyu Abdullahi from Federal Polytechnic Ida, and Paul Abu from Federal Polytechnic Nasarawa, gave insights on what problems their project is meant to solve. Actually, the, the, uh, the, the name of the site plan is they are using Yosha Lake that falls in between local and Amora community. So I am, I being the individual developer, I was asked by the federal government to develop the, the area as a, a kind of to regenerate local and Amora community using this in an urban setting. So that's why I could be able to produce design like this. High points where the exhibition defense of their projects and presentation of certificates of participation and awards where Odidi Kachimwoki from the Federal Polytechnic Oko emerged third. In Abuja, 
Princess Ekwe Ajide, ABS News. On the foreign scene, North Korea has fired a ballistic missile towards its eastern waters, according to officials in Seoul, hours after threatening a first military response to efforts by the United States to boost its security presence in the region. North Korea's Joint Chief of Staff said the short-range ballistic missile was fired from North Korea, Wusan area. The missile flew around 240 kilometers and reached an altitude of 47 kilometers, the JCS said, adding that shortly before the launch, the, North, the South Korea and the U.S. militaries had staged a pre-planned missile defense exercise. Pyongyang has state, state tested a record number of missiles this year, including a possible failed intercontinental ballistic missile, while Washington and Seoul has expanded the scope and scale of their joint military exercises. In a statement after the discussions, U.S. President Joe Biden, South Korea President Yoon shun yul and Japanese Prime Minister Fuyun Kishinda strongly condemned North Korea's unprecedented numbers of ballistic missiles launched and pledged to forge still closer trilateral link in the security realm and beyond. In sport, WBC heavyweight champion Kirsten Fury says he needs to fight Anthony Joshua before he retires from Boskin after that it will be a transversy if the boat didn't take place. The 34-year-old Briton announced his retirement on numerous occasions, but speaking on the High Performance Podcast, Fury believes he still has unfinished business with the British Nigeria before he can hang up the gloves. Negotiations over a potential board between Fury and Joshua's team broke down in September, and Fury will now defend his title against Derek Chisora in London December 3rd. Discussions over a potential board between both fighters were heard following Joshua's defeat, in a rematch against Oscar Uskin in August. Shortly after the board, Fury challenged Joshua to a fight through a video on social media to which Joshua accepted, saying he would be ready in December. Negotiations ended with both parties blaming each other for the crash in talks. The management and staff of Anambra Broadcasting Service, ABS, had bid farewell to a former staff, late Mrs. Amaka Fidele Obi, Mrs. Obi, who died in active service, was a staff of commercial department of the establishment and wife of Reverend Chuka Obi of the Diocese of Oka Anglican Commission. Correspondent Amaka Chibuzokoye filed the report taken from here. Amaka Ocean, as she was fondly called by her colleagues, also played a major role in the ABS TV and radio drama series in the house. She was aged 48. In a sermon during a brief commendation service in her honor at ABS headquarters Oka, ABS spiritual director Reverend Canon Basil Oji remembered Mrs. Obi as humble, dedicated and one person that positively affected people that came in contact with her. Reverend Canon Oji asked her colleagues to render good stewardship of their lives as late Mrs. Obi did while on earth, consoling them to take heart in the good work she did while on earth. Wife, our sister, our mother, and our friend. Sudden, because less for us we will say her time has not reached. But maybe to God her time has reached. And that is why we are gathered here. She has played her own part and departed. And what is left for us now is to emulate some of the good things that we saw in her life and try to imbibe such attitude. In his speech, the managing director of ABS, Sashido Obidegu, eulogized the deceased, describing her demise as very unfortunate, which came a few months after his assumption of office. Sashido, however, noted that in the short time, late Mrs. Obi's ideas and contributions helped him in settling into the organization and in the discharge of his duties, noting that she was a very dependable, reliable, and dedicated staff. She was very dependable, 
very reliable. Somebody you can, if you entrust anything in her hands, you're sure she will deliver. It's really unfortunate, rather very, very unfortunate that uh, Amaka has to demise a, a few, a few, a few months. Just about two, three months. I assumed uh, responsibility as managing director of ABS. I recall my first day here after my meeting with the management and staff of ABS. She came to me as somebody who's close to me and revealed a few things that I was going to experience here. And I cherish that dearly today. It's really sad, very, very sad. You know, I, I wish, I wish we, are, we, are, we are doing something else you know, about Amaka other than you know, holding this, uh, this service. You know, which, uh... The remains of late Mrs. Obi were taken to Emir's house, Oka, where a funeral service in her honor was held at our Savior's Anglican Church, Oka, and condolences followed up. Meanwhile, it was a sad and mournful atmosphere at the funeral service of late Mrs. Fidelia Ukamakobi of Umudioha village, Ihiala. She passed on on Friday, 9th September 2022 after a brief illness at the age of 48. Correspondent Emmanuel Chibata reports. Late Mrs. Obi, Ni Aniagolo, was the wife of Reverend Chuku Kadibia Obi of Anglican Communion, Oka Diocese, and a staff of Anambra Broadcasting Service, ABS. After lying in state at our Savior's Parish, Emil's house occurred the funeral site. The burial service was presided over by the Archbishop, Province of the Niger, and Bishop of Oka Diocese, the Most Reverend Alexander Ibezim. Archbishop Ibezim urged Christians to worship and follow God in truth and to be wary of their lifestyle this end time. The prelate who prayed God to be the comfort of the bereaved family lamented the high level of insecurity in Nigeria, stressing the need for all to be circumspect in all their activities. It is where the Lord will give you the heart and the spirit. Everything will go very well. I have no doubt. And the lesson for many of us Earlier in a sermon, the vicar, our Savior's parish, Emir's house, Oka, Reverend Azubike Mwike, enjoined Christians to see death as a reminder to live an impactful life because it is a necessary end for all mortals, even as he consoled the family, noting that the Lord gives and the Lord takes. The wife of the Archbishop, Mrs. Choma Ibezim, described the deceased as a vibrant and spirit-filled clergy wife in the diocese who was very loyal and God-fearing, adding that her departure was disheartening. The managing director of Anambra Broadcasting Service, Sachido Obidegu, who led staff to console the bereaved family, sympathized with the family to take solace in the Lord and urged the husband to be exemplary, especially in a time like this, because people whom he had preached to are looking up to him while praying God to use his only daughter to fill the vacuum created by the loss. I want to believe and prophesy that Almighty God will find a way of recompensing you for this loss in Jesus' name. As you also pray, when you might get another time to live in America and go up and put Jesus Christ in your mind. And then also pray about your daughter. That girl, by virtue of this loss, will be a very big blessing to you. Any gap that is being created, no, any vacuum that is being created by virtue of the absence of our mother, her entire life will fill that gap for you, Jesus. She will be celebrated not only in Nigeria but beyond the shores of this world. All this you ask to Jesus Christ.
The deceased siblings, Engineer Romanus Anyagolo and Lady Perpetual Ophia, who said the death was a shock to them, described her as a vicious woman of substances, praying God to grant her eternal rest. Responding, the deceased's husband, Reverend Obi, said the loss is irreplaceable, but expressed the hope that God will brighten his path and lessen the burden. He thanked the Archbishop, wife, the clergy and others for their support. Condolences from ABS, family, friends and well wishers featured at the event. The deceased remains were later taken to her husband compound at Ihiala. Emmanuel Shibata for it. May the soul of Mrs. Fidelia Kamakobi and the soul of all the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. Remember that you can follow ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television Oka. Subscribe to our YouTube at ABS Television Orca. Follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. The main point again, Governor Soludo has urged politicians to emulate patriotic spirit of Namdi Azikiwe. Anambra State Local Government Service Commission is going after ghost workers in local government system. On national matters, we told you federal government has tasked polytechnic students on innovation to promote technology. And on the foreign scene, North Korea has fired another ballistic missiles towards South Korea. Before we go, here is a special message again. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. Thanks for being there. My name is Chinyere Ikureke. Good night. son Aiden wants to be a great actor like me. He did great. A couple of years ago it was when his acting began. Bow down to my flaming sword. Think you can play? Catch. I take him to auditions and give him Twisco, our family favorite. With the right support, my boy is going to be a great actor. You got the role. Give your kids Twisco to support their big dreams. Twisco, power your dream. Do you even know how it works?